Welcome to your Tutor Online video lessons. My name is Joel, and today I'm going to teach you how to factor a quadratic trinomial when a is 1. I'm going to start off with a little definition for you. A quadratic trinomial looks like this. The a x squared plus bx plus c. The signs there uh, happen to be positive in this example, but they can be negative also, or any uh, positive and negative. It's called quadratic because the highest exponent is 2. That's what makes it quadratic and it also involves only one variable, in this case x. The a, b, and c are not variables, uh, they are just numbers. So uh, the a is a coefficient, the b is a coefficient, and c is a constant. So they could be, say, 1, 2, and 3, uh, or whatever numbers they are. Uh, in this video I'm going to show you how to factor uh, one of these expressions, which will be useful when you have to solve equations. We're going to start with an example Um, x squared x squared minus 6x plus 8. Okay, the first thing you want to do when you're factoring these is go ahead and set up two sets of parentheses because that's what your answer will look like. Since a is 1 here, the only way I can get x squared is two x's multiplied together. So I'm going to fill them in in the front spot. The next thing I want to do is look at that last term, the c term. In this case, it's positive 8. So over here on the side, I'm going to write 8. And I'm going to write out all of the pairs of numbers that will multiply together to give me 8, which can be 1 and 8. 1 times 8 is 8. 2 and 4. 2 times 4 gives me 8. C3 doesn't work. Um, 4 times 2 gives us 8, but we already have that pair. So since I already got to a repeating pair, I can go ahead and stop. And this is uh, all of the pairs of numbers that will multiply together to give us 8. From this list that we just made, we're looking for two, uh, we're looking for the two numbers now that will add or subtract together to give us our middle term, in this case a 6. Let's see, 1 plus 8 is 9, 8 minus 1 is 7, we, we just can't get there with 1 and 8. So let's try 2 and 4. Uh, 2 plus 4 is 6. For right now we're going to ignore that sign. We'll deal with that later. We're just, consi we're just uh, concerned with that number itself, the 6. 2 plus 4 gives us 6. So that is our winner right there. Go ahead and fill those two numbers in the last spots here. Leave a little bit of space for a sign. It doesn't matter where they go right now. But we have a 2 and a 4 in the last spots. The very last thing we're going to deal with is the sign. To figure out the sign, we're going to look at that last term, and it will give us a clue. We see it's a positive 8, so we know that the signs have to be the same. Because the only way to get a positive number when you're multiplying two numbers together is either they're both positive or they're both negative. So now that we know that they're both the same, we go and look at that middle term. And since they're both the same, it's going to match whatever that middle term is. In this case, it's a negative. So we know that both of these terms have to be a negative. And that is uh, x squared minus 6x plus 8 factored out. Uh, at this point, if you're not sure if you have the right answer, you can always FOIL uh, this expression here to, uh, to check your answer. OK. Uh, I want to do another example for you. Let's look at x squared plus 7x minus 18. This is similar to the first example, but this time the c term is negative, and that will change things a little bit. Uh, you'll see why here in a second, but the steps are exactly the same. I'm going to go ahead and write out two sets of parentheses, leave enough space for two terms and two signs. Again, the only way to get an x squared is two x's multiplied together. We're going to take our last term, which is 18. Again, I'm not worried about signs until the very end. I'm going to go ahead and write out all the pairs that will multiply together to give me 18. I have 1 and 18. 2 times 9 gives me 18. Um, let's see, 3 uh, and 6 give me 18. Let's see, 4 doesn't work. 5 doesn't work. 
6 times 3 gives me 18, but I already have that. Uh, so once I got to my first repeating set, um, I can go ahead and stop. That means saw uh, I already have all of the terms here that multiply together to give me 18. Now I'm going to go look at the middle term as a 7. I'm going to see is there any way I can add or subtract these two numbers together to give me 7. 1 and 18, definitely not. Um, let's see. 2 and 9. Well, 9 minus 2 will give me 7, so I'm going to circle that because that is definitely a candidate. Let's see, 3 and 6 um, will not combine in any way to give us 7. Um, but you want to check all of uh, your possibilities here because sometimes there's more than one possibility that does work. So now it's 2 and 9. We'll go back in here and fill them in. It doesn't matter where they go for now. Okay. 2 and 9. Now we just need to figure out our signs. To figure out what sign goes where, we're going to look at the sign in front of the last term. In this case, it's a negative. When it's negative, we know that the signs must be different. Okay. When they're different, we're going to look at the sign in the middle term, and that sign is going to go with the biggest number. So we have a 7. The middle term is positive. And we know the signs are different, so the positive sign has to go with the 9, which is bigger than the 2. Signs are different, there's a negative. We have a positive and negative to give us a negative. 9 minus, uh, sorry, x minus 2 and x plus 2. Again, if you're not sure if you have uh, the correct answer, go ahead and foil it out to check your answer, and you should get the original term. Okay. I want to show you one more example because of uh, something um, specific that can happen when we're dealing with factoring. Let's look here at x squared plus 4x minus 9. Not all trinomials are factorable. For example, this one is not factorable. We'll discover that when we go through our steps. We have our 9, and we'll write out all the terms that give us 9. 1 times 9 gives us 9, 2 doesn't work, 3 and 3 gives us 9, and that's it. Now, we're looking for any of these pairs that will add or subtract to give us the middle term. Let's see, 1 and 9 definitely cannot um, give us a 4, and 3 and 3 definitely cannot give us a 4. And we ran out of terms, so that means x squared plus 4x minus 9 is not factorable. The only way uh, to um, get an answer if this were in an equation is to use the quadratic formula. So now just a quick recap um, of, the, of the steps is you're going to uh, go ahead and write out your set of parentheses, fill in x in the first spot, get your uh, all, all the terms that multiply together give you the third number, find the pair of terms that add or subtract together give you the middle number, fill them in on the last spots of uh, the parentheses, and then to figure out your signs, you're going to look at uh, the second sign first. If it's negative, then both of the signs are different. If it's positive, then the signs are the same. Then you look at the front run. Um, if the signs are the same, it's going to match that middle term. And if they're different, uh, that sign is going to go with the bigger number down here. Well, thanks for joining me for this lesson today. I hope it was helpful for you. And I know that factoring is a difficult um, topic. So please leave your questions here uh, on the video, and I'll try to answer them and help you to understand a little bit better. You can send me an email, joel at yourtutoronline.com, and go over to the Facebook page and um, like the page there, and we can continue the discussion that way too. And if these videos are helpful for you, please share them with your classmates. And I'll see you next time. Happy studying.